carbonyl compounds contain acidic hydrogens attached to the alpha position to the alpha carbon. Now because carboxylic acids also contain the carbonyl group, they also contain acidic hydrogens attached to the alpha position and as a result, these acidic H atoms attached to the alpha position of the carboxylic acid can be deprotonated and can react in different types of reactions and this is what we're going to briefly discuss in this lecture. So let's suppose we take a carboxylic acid as shown and we mix it with a strong base that is at the same time a bad nucleophile. So one type of an example of a molecule that is a good base but a weak nucleophile is LDA. LDA looks something like this. We basically have a nitrogen with two lone pairs of electrons and two isopropyl groups attached to that nitrogen. We also have the lithium that interacts with the nitrogen electrostatically. So basically, this is a good uh, base because it contains two sets, two pairs of lone electrons, but it's a poor nucleophile because it contains these relatively large isopropyl groups and so that creates steric hindrance. So if we mix this LDA molecule with the following carboxylic acid, we basically produce this carboxylate ion. So this acts as a base, attacks the H atom, uh, breaking this bond and plaques into electrons onto this oxygen. So we have resin stabilization on this carboxylate ion. Now notice this nitrogen cannot attack this carbon nucleophilically because this is simply too sterically hindered and it will not have space to approach approach this carbon here. Now, if we add a second equivalent of this LDA of lithium diisopropyl amide to this carboxylate ion, then now this acts as a base and deprotonates the second acidic position, the second acidic hydrogen found on the alpha position. So this H is more acidic, so it's deprotonated first. This H is a little bit less acidic, so it's deprotonated second, and we form this dianion. So an anion that contains two uh, full charges, two full negative charges on two different atoms. So we basically have the delocalization of negative charge among these three atoms as shown. So now if we take our dianion, we can react it in two different fashions. If we take the dianion and mix it with a primary alkyl halide, such as this methyl bromide, then we have a nucleophilic SN2 reaction taking place in which this carbon acts as a nucleophile bonding to this carbon here, forming a carbon-carbon bond, so alkylating the alpha position of the the carboxylic acid. At the same time, this is a good leaving group, so this bond breaks off and the bromide leaves. So we form this alkylated carboxylate ion. And if we react it further, if we protonate this oxygen, we basically form our alkylated carboxylic acid in which the alpha position has been alkylated as shown. Now, if we instead of reacting with the primary uh, alkyl halide, we mix it with our bromine, we basically also undergo a nucleophilic essence reaction and now instead of alkylating our alpha position, we brominate this alpha carbon position and so we have a nucleophilic essence reaction taking place, this bond breaks off and we basically brominate our molecule, the carboxylic acid. So we see that because the carboxylic acid contains the carbonyl group, it undergoes similar reactions that our carbonyl group undergoes. And in this case, we examine how because the carboxylic acid contains alpha hydrogens, those alpha hydrogens under certain conditions can be deprotonated and that dianion can undergo two different types of reactions as shown.